live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell EMC World 2017. Brought to you by Dell EMC. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live coverage here at Dell EMC World 2017. This is theCUBE's coverage. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Keith Townsend this weekend with Pat Gelsinger, CUBE alumni, back on theCUBE, CEO of VMware. Um, Pat, you've been on every year. It was our eighth year covering of, uh, of EMC World. Now transitioning for the first time, Dell EMC World. Technically there was an event in Austin, um, Dell, Dell World, but this is the real transformation the one, yeah. of, of yeah. everything. You're at the clue of everything. VMware is, and we've talked about this before. I mean, I mean, four years ago we talked about hybrid cloud and it's not, it's a mindset that's seeming the themes here. VMware is the center of all the action, whether you talk about hyperconverge all the way across, welcome to theCUBE again, great to see you. Hey, it's always great to be here. Thank you, thank you, uh, John, and you know, and to our friend, Mr. Vellante, hope to see you someday, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, it's the third time. <laughs> I can yeah. guarantee you, Pat, that Dave will not miss VMworld, our eighth if year you covering. Do, buddy, if you do, <laughs> Dave, you've been calling me out, the man. The gauntlet is laid down. You will be at VMworld, by hook or by crook. Pat, exciting keynote. Okay, a lot of meat and potatoes, messaging. But at the end of the day, VMware is pumping on all cylinders. Give us the update. You know, there's a lot of hallway conversation. NX, NSX is doing extremely well. Obviously, AirWatch investments mm -hmm. paying off. Sanjay's always chirping on that and talking about it. Real successes. Give us a quick update on VMware. Yeah, and you know, overall, I'd say you know three things about VMware right now. Number one, you know, the new products are starting to really deliver. And you know, we talked about you know NSX starting you know three years ago, but it was small. Well now, you know, we hit the billion dollar run rate in Q4. I mean, this thing is getting big enough that, you know, as we grow that, it's really starting to produce overall company growth. So that's getting people excited. NSX, vSAN, uh, AirWatch, really starting to deliver at scale uh, for the business. You know, secondly, you know, I, I'll say, you know, when you go into an IT, right, uh, institution, you know, you're in one of two columns, as I describe it. You're either in the procurement column, which says, give me a lower price, or you're in a strategic column, that says, how can we do more, right? And I'll say, you know, a lot of the things that we've done, NSX, security, but maybe more so than anything, the Amazon uh, partnership was the one that sort of, you know, tipped us from the procurement column to the strategic column. And as a result, customers are really seeing the strategic value, this ability to do that vision of any cloud, any app, any device, and we're the company that is the bridge to the future uh, for them. So that's really turned the uh, tide. And the third is, why we're here, right? We really are seeing the lift from our Dell uh, friends and many of the solutions that we're building, their expanded uh, market capacity is really driving our growth as well. So those three together and, you know, I was just say, you know, lots of other, you know, I, I'm so proud of my team, right? As we sort of weathered through some fairly dark and stormy days and now we're on the other side and, you know, the breeze is blowing at our back, the sails yeah. are up and we are sailing yeah. the ship, and, baby. And we actually were on the cube. we've been documenting it for all this time, but you, I remember you telling me, John, NSX is my big bet because I asked you the disruptive enabler yeah. question. Okay, so that's, that's flowering, doing well. What's the bet now? I mean, are you, is, is the bet to double down? Is, where are the areas you're looking at now saying, okay, we got some growth here, things are blooming, the, the nutrients are in the soil, so yeah. to speak. Where's the, the strategy? What's the, what's the, what are you looking at now? What's the bet? Is it double down, new products, whatnot? Yeah, so NSX remains the top of the heat. You know, it is the number one priority for us as a company. And obviously, it's growth rate. We're seeing that all over the place. And it really is to be that, you know, the center of the data center virtualization, the SDDC, you got to do the network. But the future of NSX to me is so profound, right? Because it's not just NSX in the data center, but it's NSX reaching to the container level. And that's what you saw today in our uh, announcement with Pivotal, that we're integrating it natively into container environments and the Pivotal Cloud Foundry. But it doesn't stop there, John, right? We're stretching it to cross data centers and across clouds. And with our cross cloud architecture, right, we're going to have it available across multiple clouds. So it is that conduit, you know, that layer, or I'll say we're building a highway between data centers or between private and public clouds. So that becomes really important. 
but it doesn't stop there. We're stretching it into the branches as well as people transform their branch architectures and SD-WAN, yeah. you know, NSX plays a role, but it doesn't stop there. <laughs> we're, you know, NSX is also the way that we're reaching in or one of the core technologies to transform the telco and service provider networks as well. And it really is part of that core NFV strategy for us as well. So it is a strategic layer. You know, I believe every, every company has a franchise product. And VMware, that was vSphere, ESX. You know, that was the thing that propelled us into existence. NSX, our next franchise product, right? It's that big. So Pat, let's talk a little bit more about NSX. Some of the criticism around NSX has been that, you know what, we're taking legacy constructs, the virtual switch, the VLANs, and we're bringing that out to the cloud. Developers don't want that. They want native APIs. Can you talk to how you're meeting the needs of the developers mm -hmm. with NSX as well as the traditional VMware customer? Well, let's talk about what I announced today as one example, <laughs> right? You know, and the NSX announcement today with Pivotal is exactly that. Right, it's just saying, you know, I don't, you know what, what is that networking crap? I just want to get my ports, my containers connected to each other. I want to be able to load balance them. I want to be able to firewall them in a very seamless integrated fashion. And that's exactly what developer ready infrastructure that I talked about uh, and announced in the keynote today is doing that together. There are some new interfaces that are emerging in the container world. You know, CNI, container uh, network interface. You know, NSX will have native uh, support for that. Uh, as well, because it is that way. You really, and that, that, that really is what we'll, you know, as I was describing, is the friction between this high container microservices uh, world and you know, infrastructure requirements for networking security and how do we bridge those two worlds? How do we deal with the friction points between them? And that's very much what developer ready infrastructure and NSX is at the heart of that. Is Pivotal really ready though? I, I want to drill down on Pivotal because one, I like the messaging, I love the announcement, but Pivotal is a pass, it's a smaller piece of the bigger market. Is Amazon the other play? Because there's a multiple passes now, multi-cloud is yep. essentially an extension of your original comment five mm -hmm. years ago of hybrid cloud. So hybrid cloud gateway to multi-cloud, what's the pass developer ready infrastructure look like beyond Pivotal? Yeah, and you know, clearly, you know, let's be very honest. I mean, you know, you know, we, we are out creating a, and the Pivotal team is creating a, a new way to develop and deploy applications. And I think that's a decade long, right, or even longer cycle in front of us. But what's happened over the last, couple, uh, last year or so is Pivotal has gone from being this little developer thing to now, companies are deploying it at scale. You know, and that's what you heard Bill talk about on stage today, that they have companies like Ford and uh, Comcast and uh, State Farm who've now gone into this full bore on their new application development. They are running applications, many applications at scale, and they're pivoting software to become a central element. Uh, you know, I mean, do you think, when you think of the coolest IT companies in the world, do you, do, does Ford and Comcast show up on that list? But they are bringing, with Pivotal. Ford does, I mean, Ford's Ford. doing Palo Alto <laughs> R&D Center. Yeah, you know, but they're bringing software skills with Pivotal as core competency into. Ford's a customer of Pivotal. Yeah, yeah, big, big customer, and really changing how they think about their application and user experience as a result. So they're really now starting to see that inflection point in their business, and this partnership, as you said, as Bill said, 100 for 100. You know, I've probably personally talked to 30 uh, customers about it. You know, Bill certainly talks to more uh, in that uh, discussion, and 100%. Right, I mean, people immediately see the value. It is a existing pain point. You know, people say, boy, now how do I take this new container application world that I'm in, right, deploy that in production very quickly? Yeah. We have the most compelling answer in the marketplace. And, you know, obviously with Pivotal, as we showed in the slide today, you know, it's a cross-cloud service available from private cloud, almost all of that VMware hosted, but then available on Google and Azure and Amazon as well, so it really is a cross-cloud service also. So VMware, glue of the infrastructure, NSX, primary ingredient of that, we're making big strategic bets on NSX, and the community, VM, the VMware community is rabid. 130,000 members of VMUG. There was an announcement about the uh, my I love community. Those VMUG guys. They're man. they're they're passionate they about rabid. it. I love they, it. They love they love <laughs> their geeky VSphere. And rabid, they man. love their <laughs> NSX. <Perfect. storm. laughs> so let's talk about the ecosystem or ecosystem in general. 
One of the strengths of VMware has been the ability to partner with the broad ecosystem. Dell Technologies, or Dell EMC's biggest competitor is about $30 billion, which is about $8 billion less than VMware and, and market cap. Obviously there's great synergies between Dell Technologies and VMware. Mm -hmm. There's some angst out in the community that NSX, the whole picture, that whole glue, won't be available for partners and other uh, competitive vendors to yeah. uh, uh, Dell EMC. Can you comment on that? Sure. And you know, I'll make two different comments, um, two different perspectives. One, you know, we're going to continue to work hard to support the HPs, the Lenovo's, the Fujitsu's, Inspurs. I mean, you know, they they are part of that ecosystem. We're going to work hard to keep, you know, making that available. You know, I was just over in uh, Japan. You know, we announced the uh, IoT partnership uh, with Fujitsu, and you know, things are going well in our Fujitsu relationship. As I said on the Q4 earnings call, uh, my HP business grew, my Dell business grew faster, but my HP business grew. So they're seeing more you know, success uh, with us. We're going to continue to partner with uh, Cisco uh, and uh, really find ways that we innovate together. I mean, they're here and you know, we're, you know, and, and it's not because any of us necessarily say, oh, is that the right strategic thing to do? It's what customers want. And at the end of the day, if you just say, do what customers want, Boy, you know that's a pretty good guiding light. And you know, well, you got a track record on, on partnering. I mean, I mean, you could. Your point is, is Dell bogarding and hogging all the action? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I would say that you deal with Amazon is, is proof well, point that you're yeah. going outside the quote the family, if you yeah. will. Proof point number two is the ecosystem is changing, right? And who the partners are. And again, the IBM and Amazon announcements last year. You know, thank you, John. You know, we're just smack on for this because how much revenue does Dell get when I partner with Amazon or IBM? Zilch. Zero, zero or yeah. negative. Right. Right at that level. So you know, clearly, I mean, they are saying, go do the right thing for your business, Pat. You know, go drive VMware aggressively, including other partners beyond us. But we also but that's a direct know, marching order from Michael, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. me and Michael actually talked about this maybe when that decision was made. I zined him a little bit on it, like, hey, is, what's going on with you and Pat and yeah. this VMware thing? He, was, he said, I'm completely behind the AWS deal. Yeah, that, was, absolutely. that was amazing. Yeah, he, he was. And, uh, you know, and in some ways, I'll say, I, I, I won't say that he instigated it single-handedly, but he made very clear, and you know, he personally called Andy on this to reassure him in that partnership. You know, the other thing I'd say in, in the ecosystem, though, the ecosystem is changing. You know, I'm uh, worried about my partnership with Accenture and Cognizant and you know TCS and Wipro and uh, you know Deloitte. You know, they're part of the ecosystem mm -hmm. as well, where they didn't used to be. Uh, also, we have partnerships like uh, Palo Alto Networks, which has emerged, and Arista, and uh, you know Checkpoint and Trend and uh, you know 360 in China. They're part of the ecosystem uh, as well, and clearly we have you know a broadening partner community here of the. Uh, so basically, resellers. they're going to keep you in check. So basically, what you're saying is absolutely they. <laughs> you have a lot of checks and balances going on across the board on the ecosystem. Um, changing gears, Pat, I want to get your thoughts. We talk about this a lot. Years ago, you made a quote on theCUBE, it's been pretty famous. If you're not out in front of that next wave, you're driftwood. And Dave and I use that all the time. You've seen many, many waves. Um, mm -hmm. What wave are you on now? Obviously, you mentioned NSX, but bigger picture when you talk to customers, because I want to try to get the impact of the customer. What wave should they be on that you're riding that you want to bring them on? Yeah, yeah, and I think, uh, and let, let's look at that maybe from two different uh, perspectives. Uh, you know, there, there is so much hype in our industry, right? You know, the hype cycle, right? You know, the curve of hype, right? The valley of despair, the plains of prosperity. And, uh, you know, I believe that very thoroughly. And, you know, I joke about it all the time. And, you know, uh, I, I rib some of my uh, analyst friends on that uh, at different things. Now, you know, in some of those things, clearly, you know, IoT and machine learning, deep machine learning, I mean, they are very much in a hype phase right now. And I think the business reality of those is clearly less than the hype cycle would say for the near term. But I believe in those things. You know, there's other things like VR, AR, I'm personally not as you know, enthusiastic on. A little bit know. further out on the waves. The short term yeah. waves are what, IOT? I mean, if well, I'm a customer, you, know, I'd say, you, say you know, again, they're, they're further out. You know, we haven't got to the planes of prosperity in those, even though we're laying track for what those are going to look like. The ones that I'm really excited, you know, I think now, and you, you know, we've been on the uh, hybrid cloud banner for a while. Hey, I think this gets to be very real over the next couple of years yeah. in a big way. 
And I think people, you know, I shoot my pendulum slide today, you know, from centralized to decentralized. Yes. And, you know, I, I believe some of the IoT intelligence moving to the edge will become a force that balances out some of this, everything gets centralized in the cloud, and the realization that hybrid cloud really is the right answer in many respects. Cost, yeah. performance, privacy. Uh, and Wikibon just put out a survey of research yesterday, I quoted it on the tweet, true private cloud is going to be a $260 billion market. So private cloud's not going away either. Hybrid is really the gateway for multi-cloud, as we were saying. Do you see that same picture of multi-cloud uh, having that gateway be hybrid cloud? Because multi-cloud really isn't a reality as we've been speculating. Mm -hmm. It's certainly coming. Yep, yep. But latency issues, but hybrid cloud is a path. You have one with Amazon. Your thoughts on that trend? Yeah, Private I, I cloud, think. cloud, hybrid, and multi-cloud. Yeah, and I think some of it is we, we, you know, we've talked about it and customers really haven't been able to do it very effectively yet. On multi-cloud. On uh, you know, hybrid cloud or multi-cloud, uh, either one. And now it's really starting to, okay, right, the economics made sense. You know, I have one customer, they're running their private cloud at 80 plus percent utilization on a consistent basis. Unheard of levels, right, of data center utilization because they have a good hybrid cloud. You know, the multi-cloud capabilities, you know, we're just starting to see customers with, you know, NSX and being able to really operate in the multi-cloud way and, you know, we'll release those in the next quarter. Uh, you know, those things are going to, you know, customers are excited about this. You know, we had uh, for, you know, the Amazon service, you know, we had uh, almost 2,000 now beta customer nominations for the less than 100 beta customer slots. Oh. I mean, this is like trying to get into Stanford yeah. as an undergrad. How I is mean, the Amazon thing going? <laughs> Give us the update quickly on the Amazon. What's the status? And obviously, great announcement. Great to see that. A lot of people were excited by that. I thought that yeah. was significant. Yeah, yeah, you know, you saw the demo of it today. You know, I mean, Which was uh, cool to see it for the first time. Yeah, you know, demo stream, you know, and it's elegant. Right, you, you know, in that sense, if you're an Amazon lover, you sort of say, oh, I get it. If you're a, a vCenter hugger, hey, I get it, right? You know, this makes sense. You know, <laughs> peanut butter and jelly, bring those things together. I mean, you know, all works. And, you know, as, as you know, it's coming along, we'll, uh, you know, we said middle of the year, we're on track to release that. So, you know, and, and I shudder to think that I wouldn't have a, a great service before VMworld. So, yeah. you know, we're, uh, <laughs> we, so, we are heads down to have that uh, available in the marketplace a lot of enthusiasm from customers. Pat, I saw Intel here, I want to get a personal question for you, because we got to get the personal angle, because you always like to give some good insight. Uh, you come from Intel, the cadence of Moore's Law, you've, you've lived that, you kind of have that in your DNA. Um, you're at VMware, the chief of VMware. I asked Michael the question yesterday, what is the core uh, big um, themes that are timeless in your, in your one core thing within VMware that's different? Obviously, Moore's Law drives mm -hmm. the cadence of Intel. Yeah. Uh, Amazon, Bezos talks about lower prices, faster delivery. Uh, Michael said, listen to customers and, and build, understand technology and ship it. What is VMware's timeless um, uh, cadence or the key ingredient that in the DNA of VMware that, that yeah. you can talk about, that you guys strive towards? Yeah, you know, we, we sort of describe it as these fearless innovators. We, you know, we just do things that, you know, as we turn hardware into software, right, you know, we make the impossible possible and then we make it common and standard. Right, and that's sort of this, you know, as we you know, take these hard things that only can be done in hardware, we turn them into software and we make them pervasively available and now you can't live without them. You know, that's who we are and this fearless innovation that says, you know, boy, if it's a, if it's a, you know, a piece of hardware that we can find a cool way to do it in software, we're going to do it. It's so funny, everyone always talks about the VMware ecosystem and we even comment here, but I think it's interesting, you have a checks and balances with the ecosystem. What personal thing has come out to you over the past year that, that kind of gets you more focused in on just keeping your eye on the prize? Share with some personal color on an observation, a customer meeting, or, or, or technology conversation that keeps you in, ch in check as the CEO of VMware. Yeah, and, you know, let, let me take that in two dimensions, uh, John, if I might. You know, first, you know, on the personal side, uh, 2016 was the most challenging year of my personal and professional career. Right, just, you know, as you, uh, uh, you know, I had two weddings and a new grandbaby, so grandbaby number three, that's really cool. Uh, I had a broken foot. I had a, a son who had chemotherapy uh, last year for Hodgkin's lymphoma. You know, we relocated one of my sons. We're selling uh, three houses uh, in Stress. Oregon. <laughs> uh, we uh, relocated my in-laws. My father-in-law passed away. We've gotten uh, mother-in-law. Deli EMC merger. Right, you know, that was the personal side. And then I'm dealing with the stuff
stock going from 80 to 40, you know, back to 90. I mean, rumors of my firing, of my being spun out, of HP mergers, you know, right? Here. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, Damn. and I'll just say, you know, part of that is, you know, your job as a leader, right, is to get through it to lead your team through it. You know, some days, and I sort of, uh, you know, a fr uh, minister friend of mine, you know, he says, I must be encouraged every day so I can be an encouragement, right? You know, so I'm walking into the thing saying, man, this is crap. I better put a smile on my face because everybody's looking at my smile and to get through it. So part of it is really getting through a very challenging Perseverance period. and keeping the faith. Yeah. Right, you know, keeping the faith up, you know, keeping, uh, you know, your head on straight, keeping the, you know, the positive attitude that we will get through it. Uh, and, you know, here we are, right? Well, Companies the scoreboard is pretty good, Pat. Your market cap is greater than HPE, we were commenting on the earlier. <laughs> um, the public company and you're part of the bigger fold. Uh, yeah. Great opportunity, congratulations on yeah. your success and getting through that and continue to persevere and smile and yeah, thanks indeed. for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, and like always, John, and you know, some of the customer things that we talked about, you know, touched briefly on like the IoT stuff. And you know, I mean, some of the things that we're doing, I mean, you know, I, I talk about changing people's lives, but you know, that crazy scenario, we're doing that. Right, I mean, we have yeah. customers who are building, you know, implantables and you know other devices around our IT technology, building new things that really, it's like, you know, we're going to make you live longer, we're going to make improve your quality of life, right, and we're going to extend yeah. that into the next generation. I mean, this is. Just I mean, if you're a young technologist or scientist or developer or computer science or electrical engineer, I mean, what a better time to live right now? I mean, all the things that are happening. It's with the magical machine Indeed. learning, deep learning. I mean, it's pretty, pretty mind-blowing. Yeah, we, we are blessed to be part of the tech uh, industry, and you know, after 37 short years in it, you know, I'm as fired up as yeah. I was the day I started. Pat Gelsinger here inside theCUBE, CEO of VMware, uh, breaking it down, sharing some stories, really giving the, the status of what's going on with VMware and all the success, uh, and also areas they're working on. And Pat, thanks so much for coming. Appreciate your support. Pleasure, Great thank stuff. you guys. We'll be right back with more Very live good. coverage. Stay with us after this short break.